Hi all, welcome to Stories Made Simple. I'm your host Rob, and in this series we're going to talk about what makes stories, well, stories. We're going to look deep inside them and talk about what you need to know to make your writing the best it can be. We're going to cover the basics and slowly work our way up. In fact, the stuff we're going to cover today is so basic it's practically prehistoric. So let's start with a little story from the ancient past. The scene is the Stone Age. And after a long day of hunting, the members of the tribe gather around to eat some of the day's catch and share their stories under the stars. Each member of the tribe tells their tales in turn, making the others laugh and shiver with excitement. Then it's the turn of one caveman, who we'll call Bob. Bob straightens up, and with the other cave people leaning in, he tells them a story that hopefully none of them are soon to forget. While out hunting that day, Bob came across a cave he hadn't seen before and decided to explore it, hoping to find something good inside. But when he ventured into the dark cave, he saw something moving. And before he knew it, he was confronted by a huge hungry bear. At this point, the crowd gasps, and Bob pauses for effect, taking a drink from his gourd. Then he continues, saying that he was certain that he would be going to join their ancestors. He never should have gone into the cave, and now he was going to pay the price for being careless. The bear struck him, knocking him down, and leapt upon him. There was nothing Bob could do. The bear was bigger, stronger, and Bob had nothing to fight with. He was about to be eaten. But, just as the bear was about to feast, Bob's hand clutched onto some sand, and without thinking, Bob threw it into the bear's face. The now blind bear roared with anger. But in the confusion, Bob was able to get up and run away as fast as his legs would carry him. By the time the bear could see again, Bob was long gone. And with that, Bob finishes his tale by taking another drink of fermented gourd juice and basking in the jeers and compliments of his tribe. But, in that same crowd are two other cavemen. We'll call them Frank and Sam. And these two cavemen are both going to have interesting experiences in the near future. Not with the same results. Let's talk about Frank first. Frank is out hunting a few weeks later, and to his shock and surprise, he comes across an angry bear, probably because it still had some sand in its eye. The bear charges Frank, who tries to ward it off with his club, but it's no use. The bear just knocks it aside. Then the bear jumps on Frank and eats him. Frank goes off to join his ancestors, and the bear goes home feeling full and satisfied that day. Poor Frank. Some days you get the bear, and some days the bear gets you. On the other hand, there's Sam. Not too long after Frank's untimely disappearance, Sam too is out walking and meets the angry bear. The bear attacks, and things aren't looking too good for Sam either. But then, Sam remembers Bob's story from the night at the campfire. Thinking quickly, Sam grabs a handful of dirt, and then throws it in the bear's eyes. And quick like a rabbit, Sam is out of there. The bear going home hungry, and Sam going home to tell everyone about that encounter over the campfire. He even gives Bob an extra portion of meat to thank him for the good tip. It was literally life-saving. Sam will go on to have many children, and he will bore each and every one of them with his story about the bear. Of course, the bear will get bigger with each telling, and there will eventually be a whole pack of bears, giant ones, but that's not really the part of human nature we're going to talk about today. So... What are we to take from this story? Well, first, that for the ancient people, stories were literally life and death. The people who listened and learned from the stories other people told were the ones that had a better chance of survival. And the ones who didn't, they had much shorter lives. We can only live one life, but through stories, we can gain wisdom and experience from others. Stories are a teaching tool that we use to exchange knowledge with other people and learn what works and what doesn't, so that we don't need to do it ourselves. And second, we are all the children of the people who listen to stories and learn from them. The ones who didn't died off. So through evolution, our brains are literally wired to learn from stories. As soon as they detect a story and potential knowledge, our brains latch onto it and start paying attention. They're literally built to do that. We are story-seeking machines. And it's a survival trait that we got from our ancestors, for whom stories meant literal survival. 
Whether it was knowing the best way to hunt, to plant crops, or to cure illness, stories were and are how we pass along our knowledge, history, and culture to each other. Our whole perception of the world is based on stories, and we use stories to interpret everything around us. Just think about that time you remembered what your mother told you, or what you learned from your brother that came in handy. They shared their experiences with you, and you listened, and you learned, and you benefited. So, with that in mind, how do our brains decide what's a story and what isn't? Well, that's actually the easy part. For our brains to consider something a story, there only has to be three components. And as long as those three things are there, bang, it's a story. First, there needs to be a subject, which is usually someone, but it can be something too. Then, there needs to be an action. And that can be something which the subject does, or which is done to the subject. The subject can be the giver, or they can be the receiver of the action. And finally, and most importantly, there needs to be a result that comes from that action. This is usually the part that's easy to forget, but it's actually the most important part. Without a result, knowing about the subject and the action they took is pretty much useless. So, in short, someone does something and gets a result. Or, something is done to something and something happens. Either way, this is useful information which our brains can work with and is the bare minimum our heads require to consider something a story. Let's look at a few examples. Bob, subject, read a book, action, and learned Chinese. Go Bob! The candle, subject, sat in the sun, action, and melted. Result. Lin, subject, taught his grandmother, action, to go online. Result. The hero, Subject, punched the villain, action, and defeated her. Result. The general, subject, conquered the land, action, and founded a kingdom. Result. Each of these is a story, and it's a story because it meets the three basic criteria, subject plus action plus result. Of course, these aren't very detailed or interesting stories, but that's a topic for another time. The important part you need to understand is that when you're writing, you need to make sure your story has a clear subject, usually your lead character, a clear action which is being taken, often by your lead character, and a result which happens because of that action. As long as you have those three basic components, your audience will instinctively recognize your work as being a story, and they will give it at least some of their attention. Keeping it? Well, that's a story for another time. Good night, folks. If you want to know more about this fascinating topic, I recommend checking out Wired for Story by Lisa Cron. It's a great book on this topic and about how our brains interact with stories. Also, if you want to support this channel, check out my work. I go into lots more depth on these topics in my books, and they're packed full of useful goodness. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.